I grew up in the Midwest. From first grade on, I was living in Michigan. I played sports in high school. I had okay grades. I had plenty of friends. But video games were the consistent hobby that I would always come back to. He was already telling us as parents he was going to make his living somehow, some way, <laughs> in the gaming industry. At that time, the one game that was being played consistently among my friends was Halo 2. And there was a television show called MTV True Life, and they did an episode on a professional video gamer named T-Squared. They've basically followed T-Squared on his journey throughout the MLG Pro Circuit. I had no idea there were video game tournaments being hosted around the country. When I saw this, I thought to myself, holy cow, this is something that we could probably do in my high school. Well, whenever Zach would say he wanted to do something, you can magnify that like double and triple. We spent a ton of time promoting this Halo tournament. We went to all of our local high school parking lots, put flyers in people's windshields, I actually got kicked out of a couple parking lots. It was cool that we were doing something as a group. It was cool that the students were putting something together themselves. We ended, we ended up having 300 kids sign up. And then our event actually was um, canceled two days before. There were a few people involved behind the scenes that uh, ended up contacting our school district superintendent. And I remember going into her office and listening to this voicemail. And in that voicemail was a police officer who basically expressed his opinion that Games like Halo were covering the minds of America's youth, and that they didn't feel this Halo tournament was appropriate to take place in a high school environment, or that it was appropriate for a bunch of young people to be even playing this game, Halo. Our event taking place wasn't an option for her after receiving this voicemail. I actually broke down in tears in the office. How important are we to you for you to cancel this so close to when we had put all this work into something? After our event was canceled, it sort of just gained some press. We went from our local newspaper to the Ann Arbor News, and our story, in a small way, kind of went viral on the internet. And there's a guy named Marty O'Donnell who actually composed all the music in the original Halo franchise, who wrote in a letter to our local newspaper, totally sticking up for us. And it was very encouraging to receive so much goodwill and support. And that's kind of what ultimately led us to creating Gamers for Gaming. We just need to find a new venue. What he decided to do was to bring this back, and this time around, do it for a charity. Yeah, you know, we even actually got some radio coverage from Gamers Are Giving. It just so happened that the guest before me was Dave Walsh. And I remember going to the studio and thinking to myself, maybe we could talk to him, and perhaps he'd be willing to come to Gamers Are Giving. To me, I was like, that's pretty incredible. Like, somebody using gaming as a, a medium to do good. Gaming had changed my life. I was making a living at competing in Halo tournaments. And when I heard about an opportunity to give back, I actually wanted to help in any way I could. Wow, I, I read about this guy a couple years ago and, and here he is uh, you know, supporting what we want to do. Hey guys, it's Kristen Riley. I'm here in Michigan at the first annual Gamers for Giving Land presented by the Gamers Outreach Foundation. Let's go check it out. The very first Gamers for Giving event, I, I definitely was a little nervous because I felt like we had a lot to live up to and overall the event was sold out. It was so surreal. It was surreal to see all these people come to Michigan to make the journey to, to be with us. We had an incredible amount of support from the local community. A friend of mine hit me up, said, hey, there's a local land, do you want to go see what it is? And I honestly had a blast, loved every minute of it. Uh, and during that event, I got uh, the opportunity to actually meet Zach. The energy he had, the passion he had, the difference he wanted to make, I literally, while talking to him, said, what can I do to help? And ultimately, we ended up donating $4,000 to a local chapter of the Autism Society of America. I found myself thinking, you know, this is really cool. We should keep doing this. That kind of led us to just making some phone calls to Mott Children's Hospital outside of Ann Arbor, Michigan, reaching out to them and saying, hey, not sure if this would be valuable or not, but we're a bunch of kids from Celine. We have this video game tournament called Gamers Are Giving. The hospital's response was very enthusiastic. And in fact, they specifically asked that we purchase anything that was portable. Game Boys, PSPs at the time. So our, our teen room is great for kids who can leave their room and come to it, but the, for kids uh, and teens in particular who cannot leave their rooms, we need something that we can bring to the kids' bedside. And I thought to myself, maybe we could create something that would store the video games and the hospital would be able to wheel this room to room. The first go-kart sketch was literally a cabinet on wheels. So thanks to funds we raised at Gamers Trigger in 2009, we ended up building the very first go-kart. 
and it was really a repurposed medical kiosk. And we equipped it with an Xbox console and the hospital was able to wheel it room to room. And it was immediately a hit. It was only a matter of time before some video game communities actually started reaching out, wanting to build go-karts for their own local hospitals. Started in Michigan, goes to Texas, goes to California. And meanwhile, while all this is happening, Gamers for Gaming is also growing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event of the night. Up next, we have the Gamers for Giving 2014 Peggle 2 Championship. There's a Halo player named Strongside, and him and Walsh are both passionate Peggle enthusiasts. And one year they wanted to host a tournament for the game Peggle. And I want to hear your prediction about who you think is going to win the Peggle Championship. Right now, Rich, he's looking unstoppable. Rich is on the top, so right now, actually, we could read off the list. And they end up making this really, like, <laughs> fancy trophy for the Peggle winners that was kind of like the prized possession of the event that everyone wanted to go home with. The greatest feeling there is, is knowing what it's for. It's Gamers for Giving. You're helping out kids in hospitals get some video games. It's a great cause. And to this day, some of the coolest people I know, some of my best friends, are people that I've met at Gamers for Giving events. We, we had a bunch of companies that donate swag and we do a big raffle and that was being one of their biggest money raises early on and now it's without a doubt streaming. Show off the six pack. We need, we need the female demographic to start donating. In some ways, Flame Sword was a pioneer. He was one of the first people to say, hey, I'd like to help run a marathon with my community that exists online already. I was really excited when he reached out and wanted to, to shave the optic beard for Gamers Outreach. We raised, I think it was anywhere from eight to $10,000, which was, uh, I believe at the time, two cards. So to see the power of the green wall, basically in my first year with Optic Gaming, was out of this world. Winter uh, StarCraft guy did it the first year I was there. Incredibly successful. That's what, that's what the light bulb lit up for me. I'm like, Winter is making a boatload of money for the charity. So how do we get more streamers? When we got to the point where we had about 300 LAN attendees just in the ballroom, we really had to step back and think, is this space too small? Walked in with Strong Side, and it was the first year they were doing it in this big place. And he walks in and he just starts going, you know, just and it just echoed. First time here, so I'm kind of nervous about it. They're trying to raise money for these gaming cards for kids that are in hospitals. And then they can play with their friends, one of their parents. Thank you! It's just, it's cool because everybody who's there has the same passion. You know, like, their day jobs, they could be doctors, they could be firefighters, they could, you know, be in sales, what have you. But for that weekend, we're all the same. We are all gamers, we are all here for a cause, and uh, it's really easy to make friends. about the only one. <laughs> okay. This is the Gamers for Giving annual Bob Ross Challenge. He's upside down. Oh. Look at that. He's happy about it. But we did so good, you guys. Proud of the 1G community, 1G squad. If you look at the trajectory of Gamers for Giving, we just got to a point where almost every year we were raising more and more money. Going from a few thousand dollars to six figures. Now game developers like PUBG Corporation are matching the donations of our community. We actually embarked on the process to just build the go-karts on our own. He came out and was showing me the blueprints uh, for how he wanted to go create his own carts helped connect him with some of our hardware engineering team. They could help review some of the industrial designs. So we found some contract manufacturing firms that were able to translate them into tools that we could use to build the go-kart. It really allowed us to start doing higher quality carts and lower our individual unit costs. And be able to use more of the money to help fund more carts. You know, when I think about Gamers are Giving at this point, the cause has sort of transcended the event in some ways. In fact, we're trying to move towards a model where Gamers for Giving is our celebration, 
but really any video game enthusiast can be fundraising simultaneous to the event or any time of the year. Caleb and Brooks met at Miller's Children's Hospital and they also were there at Children's Hospital Los Angeles at the same time for their stem cell transplant. The BMT floor at Children's Hospital Los Angeles just had the one cart, so they would trade off playing with it. After we finished at Children's Hospital Los Angeles, we felt a need to uh, keep Brooke connected, and he decided to be a junior ambassador for the hospital. Uh, he ended up raising $600, and when we gave it to Children's Hospital Los Angeles, they said, hey, would you like this money to go to the go-karts? And we said, absolutely, we played with them. When I think about this being the 10th anniversary of Gamers for Giving, I feel a sense of clarity around who we are and what we stand for and what we're trying to accomplish. I feel a deep sense of appreciation for the volunteers who have been involved over the years. It's moving to understand that the video game community is capable of being so generous, is capable of setting such a positive example. I think ultimately, wherever there are video games and wherever there are gamers, gamers outreach should and can also be. It's gonna take the involvement of the greater gaming community to ultimately see the impact that it can have worldwide.